Hello and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Dara O'Brien. The big news this week, with Live 8 taking place this weekend and the G8 Summit about to start, campaigners are trying to make it clear to George Bush that a lot of the world's problems could be solved with a tiny amount of food. Just one pretzel swallowed the wrong way. <laughs> George Bush finally agreed to give more money and aid after seeing a video showing the plight of young people in the third world, which he found very moving. Particularly the bit where Mowgli got scared by the big snake. <laughs> Bush was recently introduced in turn to five African leaders. John Kafur of Ghana, Tanja Mamadou of Niger, Fessus Mugay of Botswana, Armand de Gabuza of Mozambique, and Hifikipunya Mohamba of Namibia, at which point the presence had exploded. <laughs> Joining me tonight to work their way through a series of satirical games are six of the country's finest comedy performers. David Mitchell, Rory Bremner and Joe Brand, Frankie Boyle, Hugh Dennis and John Oliver. Welcome to you all. <laughs> Let's kick off with a round called Headliners. I show the team the photo of someone who's been making the news this week along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. The teams have to tell me what the letters stand for. This one is for both teams. Here's a picture of Tony Blair and Home Secretary Charles Clark. So what does BWCB stand for? Blair worships Crazy Bush. <laughs> <laughs> I know she's not actually in the picture, but is it Blair wants Kaplan beheaded? <laughs> it's more of a dance thinker. I think it's Blair wins cha-cha battle. <laughs> <laughs> or Blair waves credibility goodbye. <laughs> or, or <laughs> They clapped, even though goodbye begins with a G. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I just say, that is the level... That's satire. You know, that, no, that's not satire. That is the level of literacy in this country. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to do something. Is it, is it boyish wave camouflages bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> or is it burn the witch, Sherry Blair? <laughs> <laughs> oh! It, It's, Which they clapped, even though there was a the in it, between <laughs> B and W. It's, it's oh, Charles hang on, hang on. Clark. Like, like, I clapped and she's my wife. <laughs> There's absolutely no evidence of Sherry Blair engaging in witchcraft. I no, think that's that's we should test her, we should dunk her and find out. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah you could, because that would be the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> that... Hang on a second. That's frankly phenomenal work. <laughs> yeah. well. You, you popped them up, I knocked them yeah. over. Rory heads it in the back of the net. It's yeah. glorious. Oh. Dara, can I ask, is Charles Clark in the background there, or is he just a tiny wee man <laughs> who lives underneath Blair's armpit? <laughs> Pops out every so often to talk about yeah. ID cards. He, he, <laughs> or is it Britain wants Calais back? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's a reasonable demand. If we talk, yeah. if you know, if, if the CAP's on the table and, and the rebate's on the table, let's put Calais on the table as well. <laughs> what do you mean, Calais back? When we did you it. have we Calais? Did it. Yeah. Yeah. What, what we had Calais. Calais. As in court, have you forgotten? Yeah. 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 We had Calais it was... right up until quite a long time ago. <laughs> Calais, Calais <laughs> fell during the reign of Queen Mary I and she said she died, she had Calais written across her heart. <laughs> it was ours. What have yeah, you ever I, owned? Well, we had some stuff, then you came along and took it. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, and, and now we're slowly trying to get it back yeah. off you, so, uh, <laughs> so I don't advise doing this for France either. Yeah. So you had Calais for a while and you think now this is the right time in which yeah, to re-demand the return of Calais. That's why the Channel Tunnel comes up there, really. It's for troop movement. <laughs> 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 the, the sudden march on Europe by the yeah. panel is quite <laughs> scary, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> OK, Blair wrong, card's bad. <laughs> I think it is about ID cards. Is it Blair wins card backing? It actually it is uh, Blair wins card battle, which refers to the vote this yeah. week in the House of Commons on the proposed identity card bill, which has passed by just 31 <laughs> votes. Are you in favour of this? No, I'm ID totally cards. in favour of, yeah. of ID cards. Often I wake up in the morning and I think, what is my identity? <laughs> have to tell me are all the cards in my wallet yeah. and what my face looks like in the mirror <laughs> and I've realised that what I really need is to have my identity put on a giant computer like I'm some sort of sex case, yeah. Dara. <laughs> what, what are you not already on a number of computers as if you were some sort of sex <laughs> case? <laughs> you just claimed you're on a sex offender's computer. I don't mind. 
<laughs> to be honest, you know, it's it's so hard to get in the edit of this thing anyway. You might as well just, <laughs> might as well just <laughs> pretend to be a paedophile. <laughs> you get more screen time. <laughs> Anyone knows I'm not a paedophile because I don't have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> what worries me about it, and I do, I, doesn't worry me at all particularly, apart from the biometric testing of the, the fingerprints and the irises of your eyes, because I don't like the idea of some hairy great border guard staring into my eyes on the basis <laughs> that some of them might quite enjoy it. <laughs> I don't know. A friend of mine actually went to Bulgaria a long time ago, but um, they looked at his passport, and on his passport photo, he'd actually had a beard, which he'd shaved off before he went on holiday. And so this guard sort of looked a bit confused, and he explained he used to have a beard. This guard actually went and got a bit of fur and gaffer tape <laughs> <laughs> to his face. Looked at him, and then they shot him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if the bill becomes law, every adult in the UK will need to be issued with an ID card, except for the Queen, who's already got one. It's called a fiver. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, she doesn't look anything like that, though, does she? You mean they'll stop her at customs and go, yeah, they'll no, go you don't, no, and, then, and they'll gaffer tape a beard onto yeah. her face. <laughs> uh, as part of the plan to keep track of suspected terrorists, such as Abu Hamza, the ID cards will feature eye scans and fingerprints. You can't help thinking there's a bit of a flaw there. <laughs> the winner of that round was Rory's team. The next round is called Between the Lines. Rory and Hugh, can you make your way to our Mock the Week press pit? In this round, one player takes the role of a famous person making a speech, while the other says what they really mean. Rory, you are George W. Bush making his TV address to the nation. Hugh, tell us what he's really saying. <laughs> My fellow Americans. <laughs> people of Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Two years ago, I declared that hostilities in Iraq were over. Unfortunately, nobody told the other side. <laughs> See, we proved them wrong in Iraq. They said there was no link between Iraq and Al-Qaeda. There is now. <laughs> what people have to understand is the problem was essentially our lack of intelligence. People have to understand the problem is essentially my lack of intelligence. <laughs> See, problem is people keep putting words in my mouth. Imagine what it would be like if they didn't. <laughs> well, we will stay in Iraq until the job is done. We will stay in Iraq until the oil is finished. <laughs> There you go, both of you, congratulating Rory and you. Points for everyone, sit down. <laughs> now we play a round called Spinning the News, which involves everybody, so if you could all move over towards the performance area, please. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. If I judge the player's got a big enough laugh, he or she gets to sit down again. The first team to all its players sitting down at the desk wins the round. OK, let's have our first topic. It is, of course, national surveys. Anyone who tries something on that? Good man, Frankie. They've, uh, they've done a survey in America that says that Osama bin Laden is now more famous than Michael Jackson. <laughs> and you think, yeah, but it puts a lot less effort into his videos, doesn't it? <laughs> it, it really freaked the Americans out if they're just doing a wee moonwalk now and again. <laughs> Hey, more famous than Michael Jackson, but who would you rather have looking after your kids? <laughs> <laughs> they did a survey this week that said that 20% of British men have a problem with premature ejaculation. The others just don't think it's really a problem. <laughs> Sex and an early night. <laughs> they brought out a, a condom for premature ejaculation and, and basically it's got an anaesthetic in the lining, so it makes you numb and you can last for longer. Or you can wear it inside out and you don't have to wake anybody up. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Frankie, you can sit down. 
Okay, let's spin the wheel again. Ah, the next topic is the Trafalgar celebrations. Rory's in. Yeah, this was this week's uh, naval review uh, of Portsmouth, which is quite embarrassing for the Queen, because it just rubs in the fact that she hasn't got a ship. Uh, <laughs> so they line up hundreds of ships, and she goes, Oh, that's, that's a nice one. Hey, that's, oh, well, have you got one in another colour? <laughs> uh, Prince Philip loves these things, because it gives him a chance to stand on a ship and shout, Frigate! <laughs> Look, Philip. <laughs> Philip, my... No, Frigate, there, Frigate. <laughs> Next to that f***ing destroyer, right? <laughs> Very good, Rory Satan. Come on. <laughs> Let's have another topic. The topic is the Olympic bid. Johnson. We must win the Olympic bid. Because if we do, it will solve all our domestic problems. We currently have an immigration policy in Britain that is extremely racist. But when we win that bid, you watch the borders get relaxed for anyone who looks even half good at sport. <laughs> I had a time trial set up at Dover, just a guy with a stopwatch saying, look, if you can run 100 metres sub 10, I've got a passport with your face on it right here. <laughs> 9.79, welcome to Britain! Welcome to Britain! Well done, John Satan. Let's spin the wheel again. The next topic is Diana. David's coming in. Uh, this week, Simone Simmons, who makes her living by having been the friend of a dead woman, <laughs> Princess Di, has come out with a startling revelation that two dead people once had sex. <laughs> Obviously, before either of them were dead. But, um, <laughs> but according to her, Princess Di and John Kennedy Jr. once had a role in the, in the hay. And this is odd, because they then both went on to die strangely in accidents involving vehicles. Which leads me to wonder, maybe Di wasn't killed in, in an accident, and it wasn't a conspiracy. Maybe it was something she caught off John Kennedy Jr. <laughs> during sex. Something he'd inherited from JFK. <laughs> he gave her the suspicious death virus. <laughs> there you go, David. Sit down. Leaving us with one topic between the two of you. If you could both do some stuff on the next topic and then we'll choose the winner based on that. Let's have the final topic, please. It's obesity and diet. <laughs> Hugh, would you like to go first? <laughs> now, we, we've, uh, we've got a major problem with obesity. In a recent questionnaire. 11% uh, of the population were overweight, 25% of the population were obese, and 33% of the population ate the bloody survey. <laughs> um, but eating bad food goes right back to the Bible, doesn't it? That's why we stand no chance. In the Bible, you see, land of milk and honey, what's that? That should have been the land of low-fat yoghurt and a nice green salad. <laughs> And as for the loaves and the fishes, what was he cooking? Cod in breadcrumbs. What <laughs> chance do we have? Very good, you, but On the topic of obesity and diet, to possibly win the round, Joe Brand. Any jokes on this? <laughs> <laughs> um, I might just move the microphone stand, because you won't be able to see me otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> See, the thing is, I think fat people are an easy target. Literally, obviously. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and actually, you know, you might think um, I, I eat a lot, but I don't really. And what actually happened with me was I went on the pill when I was 16 and put on four stones, so that proved to be a very effective contraceptive, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I think Joe has to be the winner there. Well done, Joe. Come on back over. All the points go to Joe, Roy and David. <laughs> this round is called, If This Is The Answer, What Is The Question? On the board are six categories relating to current events. For each category, I read out an answer, and the players have to guess what the question might be. David, do you want to choose? Um, yeah, can I have uh, the environment, please? OK, the category is the environment. The answer is between 19 and 23. What is the question? Is it where the postman puts mail for number 27? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about what percentage of the vote constitutes a great result for the Liberal Democrats? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
<coughs> is it how much Wayne Rooney will weigh in stone two months <laughs> after he retires? <laughs> is it where are the numbers 20, 21 <laughs> and 22? <laughs> or, <Is it> <laughs> If you're Peter Stringfellow, how old is too old? <laughs> <laughs> is it the number of times I'd listened to the Coldplay LP before slipping into a fatal coma? <laughs> <laughs> is it how many people actually care about the environment? <laughs> I mean, actually, <laughs> genuinely <laughs> care. Yeah. Don't Thank say you. they care, but actually yeah. care about at it. At a gut level. Well, let's face it, we all have far bigger and more tropical fish to fry. <laughs> <laughs> Greenpeace constantly thump on about how we must save this planet for our children, our children's children, and our children's children's children. But hold on, what if they don't have any children? <laughs> they might not want children. Let's not spend what is quite a lot of money <laughs> on <laughs> hypothetical children. Yeah. Also, also, I know kids, they like bikes. They like shiny red bikes. I promise you, you show a kid a clean rural stream and a shiny bike, and I'll show you a kid sitting on a bike whilst pissing in a stream. <laughs> Are they not the future? <laughs> so, so, you spray on. <laughs> Is it the, the number of English counties likely to be underwater in 100 years' time? It's, uh, yes, indeed. It's oh. very, very oh, close God. to that. Yeah. Yes, it's oh. very, very close <laughs> to that. Jesus Christ! That was, that was, that was, that was <laughs> terrible! <laughs> that was less a joke, more an alarming fact. Yes. <laughs> I, I, thought it, I thought it was something ridiculously awful, but <laughs> yeah. it's yeah. gonna happen! Was, <laughs> oh, well. Night, night, my children's children. You can ride around on the bike in smaller and smaller circles <laughs> on a vanishing piece of land. To be honest, Dara, in Scotland we have mixed feelings about global warming <laughs> because we will get to sit on the mountains and watch the English drown. <laughs> <laughs> More pineapple, who is? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> the actual question I was looking for was by how many feet could, this is a very important part of the thing, oh, thank God could sea levels rise if global warming causes the ice caps to melt? In truth, the effects of rising water levels upon Europe won't be fully known for years, perhaps decades. The only thing that leading climatologists have said for sure, Holland's f***. You're not scared about it then, are you? You're petrified about this whole thing. Well, know? not now that you said it's going to be, what, 60 years? Fine, it's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, there should be an official yeah. buck-passing ceremony for the environment. <laughs> Every generation should just go to the other one, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to blow up in your face anyway. So when you, your kids... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hugh, which category would you like? Uh, scandal. Please. You'd like scandal? The answer is no, no, no. What is the question? In alphabetical order, what are Ian Paisley's three favourite words? <laughs> <laughs> or, um, how would the word no sound if you said it once in a cave? <laughs> <laughs> so, is it the name of a new musical based on the life of John Leslie? <laughs> <laughs> was it um, Prince Charles's reaction when he found out the Queen only had a cold? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue. It's to do with football. Ah, it... oh, well, it's a uh, thingy then, isn't it? Faria Alam. Yeah. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, the question I was looking for is, what answer did Faria Alam give last year when asked by the Mail on Sunday whether David Davies had flirted with her? The interview seemed to contradict statements Fari Alam made at this week's employment tribunal that the executive director had propositioned her. The FA has denied her claims for unfair dismissal. Did you know how David Davies described Sven Jordan Eriksson today? As a seagull. He said he's a seagull because he wraps himself around people. What, what goes on? Has, has what sort did, of I think crazy ass seagulls live <laughs> in David Davis's mind? So, someone has been sexually assaulted at Euro Disney there by a big cartoon <laughs> seagull. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no pictures. Yeah. No pictures. <laughs> when the sea... No when... pictures. It's just great to imagine Sven Jor and Ericsson's dating technique. It's just to go to a restaurant and then suddenly go. <laughs> <laughs> 
Have you had enough foreplay? <laughs> <laughs> just hover around the place going, you finished with it yet? There's still a bit there. <laughs> so what about the expenses? It's all put it on the bill. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 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 Farrah claimed at the tribunal that when the scandal broke, her FA bosses gave her a severe grilling, which was a relief, and she was afraid she might get a roasting. <laughs> That's the end of the round. Difficult to gauge there, but I really think it's between David and Frankie going for the points of that one. So well done to both of them. <laughs> this round is called Prime Minister's Questions. For the purpose of this game, I'll be the Speaker of the House of Commons. Rory, you're going to take on the role of Tony Blair. David and Joe, you're his Labour front bench colleagues. Hugh, you'll be a Conservative leader with your front bench, which is, of course, Frankie and John. You'll be taking a small story, but treating it as if it's the heavyweight issue of the week. To start, I'd like to ask the Prime Minister for the government's reaction to the news that farmers have launched a campaign to get the term couch potato removed from the Oxford English Dictionary. <laughs> they say the phrase makes the vegetable seem unhealthy and is bad for its image. Prime Minister? Yeah, uh, Mr Speaker, the House will wish to be informed of the campaign by the British Potato Council to have the words couch potato... Pota pota <laughs> <laughs> I say potato. You may say potato, <laughs> but we say papa pa pa potato. <laughs> well, you know. Well, in which case, let's call the whole thing off. <laughs> Thank you. Can I congratulate the Prime Minister on uh, his treatment of the word couch potato? Uh, my colleagues and I believe that the uh, phrase couch potato, along with others such as sofa turnip and <laughs> armchair carrot, are, are nothing less. <laughs> than an incitement to vegetable hatred. <laughs> uh, well, I think, you know, I, I would accept those comments, but I would also, uh, if I might, point out that the removal of words from the dictionary is actually not a new phenomenon. I myself have removed the word socialism. Uh, <laughs> the words trade union have also been removed, and last time I looked in the dictionary to find the words weapons of mass destruction, uh, I couldn't find them. <laughs> Aren't there other words that it would be better for farmers to take out of the dictionary? Words such as oversubsidised and sheep shaggers. <laughs> <laughs> and talking of oversubsidised, what is the government going to do about the enormous number of French fries which may appear in this country, along we... with Swedes <laughs> and sprouts from Brussels? <laughs> <laughs> We actually believe that genetically modified crops are the way forward for the potato. We say, new labour, new potatoes. <laughs> we agree. We believe it would be a very good idea to combine the uh, genes of a King Edward with that of a Premiership footballer to get a potato that roasts itself. <laughs> Along with a bean combined with the genes of a suicide bomber to produce a runner bean that tops and tails itself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the party opposite can trade potato puns as long as they like, but when the chips are down... <laughs> we won the election and they lost. Can I, can I suggest you are simply being pea-brained? <laughs> I take it you're an expert in the field? <laughs> I certainly have ploughed that particular furrow, yes. <laughs> You see, I mean, this is, yeah, oh, yeah, huh? Mm. Uh, I can't uh, think uh, that you've yeah. gone to seed. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, all right. You know, I tell you, I look at the party opposite, and what do I see? I see one potato, two potato, <laughs> three potato, <and> four. <laughs> what will the party opposite do about the disputed territory of Kashmir? <laughs> 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 Uh, we will launch a spud missile. <laughs> <laughs> These ideas are half baked. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough, and the winner of that round is you. Now we're going to our final round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make your way over to the performance area, please. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Bad things to say on stage at Live Aid. They've put a lovely spread on backstage. <laughs> not star caviar. <laughs> Let's not cancel debt. 
Let's consolidate it into one <laughs> manageable <laughs> number. I'm Michael Howard, and this is my rap for Africa. <laughs> Whinging Africans, eh? <laughs> Hands up, who finds fair trade bananas a little dear? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people complain that there are no ethnic minorities at this gig, but no, here they are, the black and white minstrel show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next topic is what the voices in Prince Charles's head are saying. Charles? This is the plants. You've betrayed us again. <laughs> We're going to kill your new wife, too. <laughs> if I really am the father, why is he so stupid? <laughs> How much would it cost to turn Windsor Castle bouncy? <laughs> Tell a swan they can't touch you for it. <laughs> <laughs> Nazi uniform. No, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> so what if she's your mother? Just press the pillow over her face and count to a hundred. <laughs> Very good. The next topic is inappropriate things to say on winning Wimbledon. Mr. Blair, <laughs> this is for Iraq. <laughs> Three sets, no smell. <laughs> That's palm olive. <laughs> Thanks very much, but uh, I've actually come here to talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that Nandalone's great stuff, isn't it? <laughs> This is fantastic. In, in some way, it compensates for my lost childhood, my dysfunctional family, and the fact I'm so stressed I haven't had a period for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I only won because I'm pissed. <laughs> I'm delighted to have won uh, and put all the drug rumours behind me, and uh, I'd just like to thank my husband for sticking with me. <laughs> it's, it's been everything, it's been amazing. Apart from the crowd, who are a bunch of assholes, <laughs> and I wish they'd stop trying to share in what is essentially my triumph. <laughs> I just got a blowjob in the dressing room from a womble. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, the winner of that was Frankie. Everyone sit down again. Come on, sit down. That's the end of the show for tonight. This week's winners are John Oliver, Hugh Dennis and Frankie Boyle. <laughs> and congratulations to Joe Brand, Rory Bremner and David Mitchell. Thank you for watching. Until next week, good night.